Welcome back to Cards and Comics. Today I have a video that's been a little bit of a long time coming. It's been one I've thought about making for a while and I thought, well, I might as well as I'm reorganizing and cleaning out my collection a little bit, I might as well make my video about why I've stopped prospecting or super collecting pirate cards and what happened along this journey why so many mistakes were made and why I've completely changed how I collect after about the 2013, 2014 time period. So let's go back and journey to what my pirate collection used to look like before I turned it into something that uh, kind of consumed my entire collecting passion for a while. And this is my binder of collector album, whatever you want to call it, that I had as a kid. And so I would get cool pirate cards as a pirate fan, and I would put them in here, and just to show you kind of like what it looked like. Well, you can see, you know, I got some 78, some 79. You can see it's all dusty, you know, and dirty. Um, you can see I've got some 80s cards. So this is me as a kid. Whenever I caught a cool pirate card, I just stick it in this album. And, you know, like I go to shows and pick up you know, cards, you know, and then as a 90s collector, I was a fan of Brian Giles. He was kind of like the first big star we had after the whole Bonds and uh, Benia time period, you know, like Jay, you know, we had, um, you know, we had wow. Brian Giles and then um, he was traded for Jason Bay or I think something like that. Anyway, we had Giles and we had Jason Bay. So you can see I had a big Giles collection. You know, this is like, you know, actually, it's kind of cool. I got a, I didn't realize I had a cool there museum artist proof, or that's actually just a museum card. So that can, I'm just going to keep that because that's kind of cool. Um, you know, uh, here is, you know, Giles as a pirate. Uh, here's a card numbered. I mean, you know, this card right here is numbered right here. It's numbered out of 52. So, I mean, yeah, some of these cards are kind of cool. I mean, they're not just, you know, run of the mill you know, commons and stuff. And then here's some Jason Kindle cards. So just to give you an idea, like this is how I started collecting pirate cards. Here's a cool Y axis silver, the fractal matrix. So I was really into, um, you know, collecting, you know, these cards and, and really wanted to have cool, um, you know, there's a international, Pirate cards. I mean, this card's pretty cool. I don't even remember what set that is. I mean, it's from a cool Pacific set. It's actually a team checklist, I think. So again, you know, I was, you know, super collecting Jason Kendall cards. Um, and again, you know, some of these cards are actually pretty cool. I mean, I don't see like a flare brilliance gold 24 karat or something kind of crazy. Um, but I just got a Flavor Hunt's called Chasing Kindle. It's coming up in the Warren. But like, here's Warren Morse. So like, this guy was kind of my first prospect of the Pirates as a collector. This guy completely tanked and didn't do anything. Should have been a big warning. Um, you know, but here's a bunch of Warren Morse cards, right? And he never did anything for the, for the Pirates. Chet Hermanson, again, another bust. You know, gold medallion. Chris Benson, who actually... Had a few good years, but was never the player he's supposed to have been. His wife got more attention than he did as a player. So again, you can kind of see me going through here. And then Kevin Young. And so on and forth. And actually, here's a... <laughs> here's a brilliant gold. Kevin Young, look at that. I should probably keep that and probably take it out of here. Because that's a cool card. So, I mean, like, I haven't looked at this in, in, in years. Or, like, over probably 10 or 15 years. So... I, I haven't really seen these cards or, or thought about these cards in a long time. So this is like sort of what I thought a super collecting was. But then prospecting happened. And then I got obsessed with buying the rookie cards of Pirate Prospects. And I honestly have a lot of the vintage. So I, I spent a lot of my years collecting vintage cards and... Uh, and so in around that 2010 period, I was like, you know, you know, I got to be a, I, I saw a lot of blowout forum threads and people super collecting and they had both rookies and prospects, but I really thought prospecting was going to be, you know, this big thing. Cause 
I thought, okay, you know, I can make money at it. I could take these cards and then, you know, sell them at a later point. If, you know, these guys became huge stars and Hall of Famers and whatever. And um, as I go through the journey, I'll, I'll tell you, like, it was a combination of, you know, obsessive OCD behavior com in combination with, obviously, a lot of failure from the prospect side of it, from the players, but also sort of like my um, dissatisfaction from my team I was following. So here we go into the into this harvest of broken dreams here. And we start with Joel Hanrahan. I mean, a reliever who had a couple good years. And here's a, you know, a tier one number to 10 auto. Um, here's a platinum mini out of, I think, 2011 or 2012. Yeah, 2012 numbered out of five. And so these minis were out of five. I don't think they do these minis anymore. Um, here's a really cool um, out of... Um, I'm sorry, this is, yeah, triple threads. These are the game um, used, I believe, jerseys um, out of the All-Star game. So, you know, this is definitely a cool uh, card. I'll turn down my uh, my um, video game for a minute. Sorry about that. Um, but, yeah, like, the, these are cool. Um, but they're rare. But, again, the reason I'm showing this here is because it wasn't just prospects. I also got obsessed with like modern, just modern pirates, like the coolest, you know, awesomest, you know, cards of pirate players from, from modern became a big deal. I was buying super fractors and these patch cards of players who really were just not players you'd want to spend hundreds of dollars on. And sometimes I was. Here's a good example of a of, of rookie. So here's Nick Kingdom. So this is the red refractor. Again, this is numbered out of five, four or five. So even back then, you got to remember prospecting back then, even though it costs more today. If you go back to that time period, everybody was prospecting, I think, more heavily. And they were all, it was more obscure. Like you didn't have the information like you did today where everyone knew who the good players were. And pretty much people were just prospecting on anyone. And if they were, in a Boma Chrome set and they had something written good about them in an article or whatever, or they were from the team you collected, you just went hard after them. And these cards like this were, you know, like not, you know, $10. These were like, you know, hundred, two hundred dollar cards for a player that no one's ever heard of Nate kingdom, uh, you know, red refractor. Here is a, you know, a red wave out of 25. So that's the thing you see is like the OCD part is, yeah, there is a get a Donneris. So you can see I'm collecting tons of Nick Kingdom. And here we go to Matt Haig. You know, orange refractor. Or yeah. No, this is red. I looked at orange on screen. And so this is red number one of five. So again, another red refractor, which are some of the most rare and, and if you you know, for any player, they're expensive. Even today, a, a no name Bowman Chrome prospect that's red or uh, gold still brings some money just because people take a chance on those because those are the most, you know, hard to get. Um, Mel Rojas Jr. didn't do anything. I think he was actually traded. But here's the black status numbered out of five, right? This is literally outside of the 101. This is like the hardest to get version out of Donner's Elite. Um, you know, here's um, Dilson Herrera. Like, you know, like who's that guy? You know, I don't even remember some of these guys. I was just like, okay, they're a pirate rookie. You know, I'm going to get, you know, here's a Bowman Chrome auto of his, Wyatt Matheson. You know, he played a few years in the pros. I forget it was last year, but he, he actually played a few years. So it was always a backup. Again, another red refractor. So, again, even if you take 50 to 100 bucks for some of these cards, you know, there are some more Mathesons. Jose Osuna. I mean, you know, he was had his day in the same Jacob Stallings, which actually I think he still might. He played pretty recently. He still may be in the league. Um, again, three of five, another red refractor. You can see how many red refractors I've got. And and I don't know if anyone really ever wants these cards. This is another thing, too, is I'm showing this video is just to kind of show you the depth and just craziness the collection got into. But the biggest question I have today is, are these cards still, you know, collectible? Why can't I? actually sell these cards does anybody still want these cards you know like is this something are these cards all dead um 
Yeah, here's another guy, Jeff Locke, who was supposed to have been a you know, pretty good player, pretty good pitcher. Chrome Auto. I don't think he ever really did anything in the pros. Here's Robbie Grossman. Grossman actually has bounced around, plays on some teams, but again, you know, just a base auto there. Willie Garcia, again, another red refractor out of five. Um, Jonathan Sanfurst, I mean, I think this is out of 25. Um, here's a gold. Logan Pevney, I don't even know who that is. I mean, I, I mean, I'm going through this box and I don't remember this guy. Out of 50, but I bought his gold refractor. Eric Wood, I mean, it's just... Goes on and on. Jimmy Ryder gold. John Kuchno red. I mean, I was obsessed with red refractors. A pirate player, so I would, anyone that would pop up, I would grab. The um, amazing uh, Barrett Barnes out of Bowman Sterling. I have no clue. Uh, Charlie Moore, I don't know how that stuck in there. A guy who actually made the majors. That shouldn't be in this box. Uh, Alex Presley, who actually came up for a while. Um, so you'll see a bunch of Presley cards here. Victor Black, who did nothing. I think he was a reliever. Some more Matt Hay, Clay Holmes. Those are orange. And I got a lot of Clay Holmes. I really thought Clay Holmes would do something. Here's a purple. And again, some years purples are out of 10. This year they were out of like 199. There's some autos. Tyler Waldron. Um, this is Zach Dodson. Rudy Owens. Rudy Owens had a little moment i think he got up and pitched for a little bit and maybe you know, did something where his cards got hot for like a second and then the dots in red uh two of uh, what's that number out of i can't see it very well uh two of five i think kyle mcpherson orange brock holt orange josh rodriguez red so uh, just tons of colored refractors Jarrett cunningham Gold Refractor, Alex Dickerson, Gold Refractor. Dickerson had a little bit of run. Um, James McDonald, I remember the Pirates traded for this guy. I went out and bought his rookie card right away. A couple of them. Uh, Rinku Singh, I mean, this guy was the you know the movie about the Indian pitchers. Um, or the pitchers from India, uh, Patel and Singh. I don't think they signed these cards. Like, look at the way they're signed. They look like they're signed by the same person. Like, I've always believed these were fake autos. That these weren't signed by these actual players. Um, honestly, they probably had some... I mean, I, I just think that, you know, they never signed these cards. But there's the two players that were part of that movie. Um, Robbie Grossman again. Uh, let's see if there's anything cool in here. Colton Kane, a ton of Colton Kane. More Robbie Grossman. Just, I mean, look at that. I mean, three in a row. I mean, Jesus. Just, you know, it's just obsessive, right? I mean, it's like, I only had one. I was getting three, four, five of Chaser nodes. I'm trying to think like what this card is. This is, um, Evan Meek, he was a reliever. So yeah, not, oh, and then it comes down to like, this is like a good example of um, and this is a really broke it. Okay, guys like this. Jose Tabata. So when the Pirates started getting good again with McCutcheon and all those guys, you know, Tabata, um, Starling Marte, who's actually a good player. Uh, but all these guys came up, and so I just started getting all these guys as rookies, you know, and, and started collecting them. Tabata was the guy that was supposed to have been. He, they signed him early to a big contract. This guy was supposed to be great. Then he had this weird thing where his, his wife, like, like kidnapped a baby or something and to try to blackmail him or something crazy just some awful story and then like he just kind of faded away like i mean here is a triple threads patch auto of tabata i mean you're gonna get it's just gonna get crazy on tabata here is a you know i mean he was an alan and ginner he had a couple good years i mean he actually played well enough to get that contract but here he came over as a yankee there's a gold and a regular refractor of him um again here is a another auto here's a gold tabata you know it's like this guy was supposed to have been you know a really good player and then he ended up just i mean basically disappearing you know i mean i i got just a lot of base cards but then you'll see every once in a while you'll see like here is an x fractor uh, of him so it's just like guys like that 
over and over and over just kept, you know, just flaming out. And, and I just think it took me so many years to learn my lesson. Like, you know, Rudy Owens, here we go. It, um, just like, why do I have four Rudy Owens um, Bowman Platinum autos? I mean, it's just, why isn't one enough? It, it, it just, you know, here's a guy, Tony Sanchez, you know, Bowman Chrome Blue Auto. Um, in a regular auto, like, you know, he was, I think, a first round draft pick um, back when they drafted players based on price. You know, McCutcheon was the guy who broke the mold. The more Rudy Owens, I mean, I was all in on Rudy Owens. There's a gold card. Uh, Nick Kingham, more Nick Kingham. Look at that. I mean, three blues in a row. I mean, and there's a red to 25, right? Just, and, you know, I guess in my mind, I'm thinking, like, well, if, if one of these guys really hits, I'll, I'll have. You know, all the the best cards, right? I mean, I, I will have, you know, everything that you would ever want for some of these guys. Uh, Shane Baz. And this is, like I said, I think that I just stuck this in there. Shane Baz, who's now six years past uh, being a prospect. Then here's a Sterling Marte. So I think these are just kind of stuck in here. But again, a green X-Factor. This guy's a good player, but, you know, his cards aren't worth a ton for a guy who's probably generated... Uh, a lot of seasons of three plus war. Um, but here we go. Willie Garcia, Nick Morgan, Nick Kingdom. Uh, you know, here's something that is, that is kind of cool. Like when the Pirates got good that year, they made the playoffs and beat Cincinnati. I thought about doing the entire uh, tops um, set um, pirate team set in the black. So the blacks in this year were numbered out, I think yeah, 60. So these were 2011 um, blacks. And so I've got Neil Walker. There's Pedro Alvarez, who was a guy that, thank God, thank God, because I would probably have, you know, lost my house if he had a lot of Bowman Chrome. Because he, he was a guy that was an exclusive through, um, I forget the name of that, um, set but he got exclusive deals um early on um and um never had um bowman chrome cards like he never had like a lot of the, the base rookie the, the rookie stuff that um came out you know you had to wait till he had his first tops cards to really collect him and uh, that really saved me a sh shoot ton of money because i know i would have bought everything at peter alvarez when he first came up and he came up had a good season and had another good season, you know, okay. Rookie season and had a good sophomore season. And everyone really thought he was going to do something. And he just turned into a big turd. Um, and you know, he was a very hyped guy. Um, so there's Pedro new Walker was a good player for a lot of years, but then you're going to get into Ryan Domit, you know, who's just a player. Jermillo, which is a player. Garrett Jones was okay for a little while. Wasn't great, but okay. There's Tabata, Ronnie Cedeno. So again, you know, these guys were on this team, and you know, so I thought I just put together the team set, and then I kind of, again, around that 2014 period, I kind of just lost interest in doing anything because around that time period is when the party started to, you know, it was the last hurrah. I think 2014, they made the playoffs, beat Cincinnati, um, and you know, we're starting to get good, and then it went quickly downhill. They, you know, and then you know, everyone left. They traded everyone, and it just was over. Uh, here's a guy uh, for you guys, prospect guys, Alan Hansen. You know, this guy was supposed to be good. He got wrote up in uh, a lot of magazines and he was a you know, highly rated prospect and never did anything. And that's the thing that just bothers me is like, how can you go from being a guy that's in all these magazines and people talk about and then you never even play at all in the majors? And that's just, you know, and that's the thing that yeah, I've learned about these prospecting is you could. You know, I mean, look at this Alan Hansen. Man, just got gold after gold. I mean, it's just insane. Three gold cards in a row of Alan Hansen, along with a graded. I mean, I've got four of his 50 base gold cards. There's an auto. And then, oh, look at this. I got a printing plate, uh, Pedro Alvarez right here. That's a 101. Oh, yeah, this is the guy. This is the this is the set. Okay, this is, uh, what is this set? Uh, a razor. That's what it was. So yeah, you had a you know Pedro got exclusive deal to to Razor, um, and then you know no one gave a crap about Razor because they basically had two sets. I think they did 
this thing where they did this base razor set, then they did a metal version of it that made everyone not want these versions anymore. And so like it really, they screwed over their fan base pretty heavily. And then the cards just, you know, were not popular. And, uh, but Pedro was exclusive. And so you didn't have any Bowman Chrome stuff because he was in the set and stuff. Uh, here's a EPAC card. And this was like my favorite rookie card it has for a long time was the EPAC uh, or the E exclusive. I think I got a couple in here. Yeah. So I have one. We can have four of these E cards. Um, yeah. A relic of that day. Yeah. Yeah. I told you it's going to get bad. Oh, here's my favorite pager I had for a long time. Here's a Neil Walker auto. Neil was a Pittsburgh boy. I really love this gold, you know, this futures game card, the base, and then I've got the gold version. The gold version was numbered, I think, to 50 or 25. And to me, like early on, this was a very rare. And, you know, when Pedro was coming up, this was a one of the first really limited cards of Pedro that was an auto or a game use card from Tops. Because he didn't, I don't think he ever did any autographs for Tops at all. I don't think there's a Pedro Alvarez autograph in Tops. You either have to get his, you know, base stuff or his, you know, uh, stuff like this, but I don't think he ever signed a single card for Tops um, because of that. Maybe because of the Razor exclusive, but it's just crazy. Then Neil Walker cards again. A lot of base stuff in here. Again, more Pedro stuff. And, you know, if you look at this, I've got, you know, like the silvers. You know, this is like the same year as Mike Trout rookie. So these are the, um, forget what the name of this parallel is, uh, uh, but yeah, it's, you know, I got three of those. So again, you know, this is like around the time time that, that uh, you know, like if Pedro would have done something and here is a, oh, another great example. So again, I said you had to get, um, you know, parallels. So here's two black tops chrome black. So his first tops chrome card, and these are numbered out of 62. So you got two black chromes, Pedro's. Um, and here's a green. I don't think greens are numbered. And here's a regular. So I got a green. Because right? the green was a green tent. I mean, you know, it was that theme. But there you go. There's a Neil Walker rookie. So he was in the same set that um, McCutcheon was. And here's kind of a cool card. I just kind of the card gen cards. You can see he had like two, four, six, eight stars or something. He's like a two star player. There's Neil Walker and con gen cards. I think I have a couple of McCutcheons. These are really cool cards. I really like these were game cards. They were in a Japanese vending machine and you had to like, you know, get them out of that machine. I thought that was always a cool card. Another Neil Walker auto. And then, you know, again, you know, like getting these, you know, numbered out of 10, uh, these kind of really cool elite die cuts. Again, this is numbered out of 25. This is numbered out of 50, the blue. There's a Neil Walker. Um, again, the tops chrome black or tops black. Uh, numbered out of 60. Remember the teams that I was telling you about? There's the Neil Walker version. You know, um, again, more parallels. So yeah, just a lot of Neil Walker cards. Louis Heredia. I remember going to a Chicago show and there was a guy, and I think it was because a uh, big dealer, and he he I think his his wife's sister was related to Lisa Heredia. Um, and so he had just all this stuff. And I remember thinking, like, well, I got a lot of stuff from Heredia too. And we were talking about how good he was gonna be, and we we're pumping each other up, and then the guy the guy never did anything that I can remotely think of as being, you know, valuable to, to the major league. I don't think he ever made the show, uh, but there's a blue chrome, there's a orange. So, I mean, it's not, not great that he never even made the, you know, the fine, the, the majors. And then you know, more Heredia. Oh, there's the Stetson Alley. Sets in LA, I used to have, I don't think I do anymore. So I actually sold, yeah, one of his cards. I used to have the red auto out of Bowman Chrome. Um, so like, I'm not sure, but yeah, like this card, but the red, the red auto. And 
So Stetson Alley, you know, here's some cool cards. Here's Elite Autos, another Elite Auto. Um, you know, here's a Bowman Chrome Auto. So Stetson Alley um, was drafted as a pitcher, threw 100 miles an hour, and in two years couldn't control it and walked everyone and just had no control. So he wanted to become a hitter. The Pirates said, okay. So then he converted to a hitter, had some power, and played for four or five years as a hitter. Um, bounced around and never made the show. But, like, he converted from a pitcher. But I just think about it. Like, if you could throw 100 miles an hour, right, and you're drafted, I think he was a first-round draft pick. Uh, maybe it says here if it doesn't or not. But, like, you know, if you're drafted, um, yeah, number two, you know, by the Pirates, and you throw 100 miles an hour, I mean, it says, you know, he was 9-1 and one with a 1.29 ERA, fanned 134 in 60 innings in high school. Um, you know, it's just, you know, he got a scholarship deal at the University of North Carolina, and he went directly into the pros, and he didn't last two years as a pitcher. I mean, what kind of crap is that now i sold the red auto but when he was still a, a, as a more nick kingdom by the way at the very end um i think i have 400 nick, nick kingdom cards there but if you think about it like at the very end the pirates draft this guy number two and they let him go from being basically one of the most dominating pitching prospects to just converting to a hitter and you know being just a guy and that's sort of what the microcosm what it was like collecting pirate cards to where their organization was so bad at drafting and developing players that most players when they left the pirates became good uh good good example is garrett cole garrett cole was a mediocre pirates pitcher for a lot of years like he was okay, he had good stuff, but didn't do much with it. Goes over to Houston, becomes an all star, then goes to the Yankees, and he's going to be a Hall of Famer, right? And what I told you, I've got a box of good stuff, right, or better stuff. And in that box, I've got Garrett Cole and Tayon and uh, Je uh, sorry, um, um, McCutcheon and and Starley Marte players that actually did something in the show. This is the worst of the worst, like players who made it or just not good players like Neil Walker, who's just an average player to like players who never, you've never heard of, never made it to the show. Majority of the players never made it. That's in here. And even guys like, um, Tabata, you know, never, or Tabata or whatever his name was, he never, you know, um, panned out. And that's what not you near know, 99.9% of these guys are. And this box is a really good example is that, I'm going to tell you in this box alone, there's probably two to three thousand dollars of 2010 money in here ish, maybe more. Because of all those red refractors, some of the autos, and just the sheer volume of some of these guys, you know, thousands of dollars of cards in here that may be worth today. You know, if someone said, I'll give you $500 for the whole box, I'd be like all over that, right? Like, I don't think I would get that. I'm just saying, like, that would be, like, a dream deal to be able to get rid of all these cards for $500. So, like, that's a huge loss, right, just in general. Um, But, you know, that's, you know, like, the opportunity cost is what I really want to focus on is I could have been buying, you know, stuff that I collect today, like the 90s cards, more Griffey cards, more... um you know, uh, vintage cards. Cause think about it, like in, the, in the, how cards are priced today versus then think about like what the nineties cards were priced like in 2010, 2008, 2012 compared to today. And what two or $3,000 of that money back then would have bought you in nineties cards and, and cards. I love today, Griffey cards and even vintage cards. Like, it, that would have been such a better thing for me to do. Like, I, I don't know why I got so stuck and, and obsessed with buying these cards and, and trying to do something like this. But a lot of it had to do with the Pirates were starting to win. A lot of it had to do with the, you know, Andrew McCutcheon was the first 
genuine superstar the Pirates ever has had in, in forever. Um, that I got so excited that, you know, I, I just got obsessed. But then when I saw how terrible they were at developing players, how ter- terrible they were at drafting, how they're still almost, they give away almost every one of their players that has turned into something for the most part, that it just soured me, you know, when they traded McCutcheon away, when they, uh, you know, um, Garrett, the Garrett Cole trade, um, the Tyler Glasnow trade, which is probably one of the worst trades, you know, ever made, you know, just over and over and over. It just really soured me. Like I, I'm a pirate fan today, but I don't have any, any, um, I, you know, any inkling that the team is ever going to go over the hump if they don't change some of the owner management structure, they've not figured it out. These aren't, they're not the Houston Astros. They're not Kansas city. They're not like these other teams. That's won something done something with talent without a huge budget. They just don't know how to do it. And, um, looking through this box of cards, you can see how terrible the pirates were at drafting and developing players. They just suck at it. And I got tired of doing that. As soon as McCutcheon was gone, you know, that was kind of the nail in kind of this collecting like this. And my, you know, I did change my focus and now I'm much happier collecting cards from the nineties of players. I love watching and they're not pirates. And I did get really obsessed with just the idea that everything had to be a pirate. So this is just sort of my video out there just showing you guys, like sometimes you can get obsessed with something and it's not healthy. It's not good for you because in the end, I'm looking at this going like, man, I could have a done something so much better with this, this, uh, funds B, um, even then I should have realized like, I don't need four or five cards of the same card of the same player over and over and over. Like why was I buying five Rudy Owens, Bowman, you know, uh, Sterling autos or four Allen Hansen gold refractors, you know, it's just, that's not good that's not you know that's obsessive that's dangerous to do stuff like that because you're just becoming so obsessed with having to own every one of them that when they come up for sale you say i gotta buy more i gotta buy more um one wasn't enough and i think nowadays when i buy when i look at my griffey collection and my frank thomas collection uh even my vintage collection i only want one you know even if i have more than one it was either by mistake or it's like i'm buying it so i'm gonna sell it later I don't plan on having 15, you know, Frank Thomas, the man refractors or five Griffey, you know, 99 gold refractors or, you know, six crusades of, of, of a single player because, you know, I love the card and player. So I'm just going to collect as many of them as I want. That's not what I want to do now. I know people who do that and, you know, that's fine. That's how they want to collect. But for me, it's not what I want to do anymore. I did it. You see it here. Clearly, I was like that at one point. And I'm no longer like that. And I, and I don't want to collect that way. So let me know in the comments what you think. Like, you know, what do you think about the worst of the worst here? Because I have another video I can make if you guys want to see it. Which is a much, like, it's twice as big as this. Of the stuff I consider to be the not as bad. Right? McCutcheon cards and those kind of players. So, so if you want to see that, let me know. I can show it to you. But this is the worst. Kind of show you like, like. What happens if prospecting goes wrong or just obsession goes wrong with a certain team or player? And this is what it turns into, guys. So that's it. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'll see you next time on Cards and Comics. Bye.